Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast, the authority on all things. All things. All things. All things. All things, all things R&B. Um, we, have, we have a treat. Yeah. Um, um, we have... A vocal gift. We, oh, we have elite. Mm. Yeah. Elite yeah. company yeah. Um, in the building. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I, listen, when, when they were casting for the Clark sisters, well. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you know anything... <laughs> About the Clark sisters, yeah, yeah, who yeah. are gospel music royalty. Oh, yeah. But to any singer, <laughs> they are royalty, period. That's I don't true. care yeah. what religion you are. Facts. Um, they had to call, they had to call this young lady. Well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> RB Music Community, make some noise yeah. for Shalaya. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You call. Oh, yeah, my we're gonna goodness. start there. We're, we're gonna start, start there. We're gonna, we're gonna start, start there. there. That, yeah. we, we're just gonna yeah. get <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna celebrate you from the moment we start here. Oh is that you as a singer is just something different. Different. I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do. And I think for me, it's like both of you guys, um, you might not remember the first time I met you. I know you know, but I you guys have been nothing but supportive and so kind and just so loving and supportive of what I do. And so I just I just got to thank you guys for that because you guys were so instrumental in like those earlier years. Dope. Yeah. yeah. Now, now I feel like I'm in like the same class as like Obama. <laughs> you know, I haven't I haven't sang for Obama. Have you? <laughs> I have not. Okay. I have not. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, you know. David Foster there's, doesn't there's call that. me personally. Yeah. Quincy Jones don't, you know. When I saw her at Quincy Jones' house, I wasn't invited. Oh. I was the first one. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh I just, my goodness. You know, but then yeah. you took what you took over. No, no. I you didn't. literally took over. He started doing a Quincy Jones impersonation that everybody was <laughs> dying over. No, you know what? Can I, can I tell that story? <laughs> tell because, it. Tell because, it. Because, because I'm mad. I got the video, y'all. I'm, I got the I'm video. I'm upset um, with my guy, you know, um, my guy, uh, uh, comedian. I know. I know you're talking about. I know his name. Should I say it? Yes. Uh, okay, Chris Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Money Talks himself, Chris Tucker, Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. who is by far one of one of the greatest comedians. Absolutely, well, exactly. absolutely. Okay, so so this is we'll start there. We'll start there yeah. as I go into my story. Yeah. yeah. So this so, is the uh, I mean no disrespect and then disrespect. Is no, I'm not gonna. Dis- it's not disrespect. <laughs> so, <you> know, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, we do this a lot. We do this a lot. We do this a lot. <laughs> so because he's a nice guy, mine just comes with. Straight so, disrespect. Yeah, so, yeah. He's cool. got a press. Yeah, so we're having yeah, a good yeah. time at, at, at Quincy Jones' oh, party. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's, it's, yeah. It's like, you know, anybody who's helped forge the foundation of R&B music is there. Is there yeah. Right? They're yeah, there. For sure. Like, um, it's it's crazy. And so Chris Tucker gets on the mic <laughs> and he starts doing this Quincy Jones impersonation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and I'm sitting back. Cut you guys. I wasn't there. I wasn't. I wasn't even a plus one. <laughs> and you know what? It's it's fine. It's just fine. It's fine. Uh, as a plus one as I was, uh, I'm standing and watching him do this impersonation. Yeah. And mind you, I I have been studying Quincy and trying to do a Quincy impersonation yeah. only because of Jamie Foxx. Right. Who does an yes. amazing Quincy yes. Jones yeah. well, He does so many people. And so so he thought it yeah. made me want to learn how yeah. to do it. Yeah, So, yeah. you know, I would try to do my Quincy impersonation <laughs> and study how Fox would do it. I'm like, oh, Fox. And so Tucker starts doing this Quincy Jones impersonation <gasps> that I'm not excited about. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm not happy with. You know? Right. And he's he's better than this. Yeah. So, so it's, it's like a Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones? It's like, I don't know what it he's was. Good. He's good with his Michael Jackson. He's good with his Michael Jackson. He's good with Michael Jackson. Yes. But the Quincy yes. Jones. Yes. The voice is high. It's, it's, voice it's, is high. It's, it's, it yeah. wasn't authentic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so, it's, a, it's a cadence, too. It's a cadence. It's, it's all of that. It's all of that. And when... And, and I was sitting at the piano when this was happening, mind you. I had I, I don't know what... If I had just sang or I was about to sing and... Then, and I grabbed the mic and yeah. I grabbed the other mic. The other one, the one that Quincy, the one that Stevie had. Yeah, nobody knew yeah. I had the mic. And yeah. so I grabbed the mic and I started talking. <laughs> man, you, you know, you're, you're really not doing me any justice, man. You're just, you know, you're talking. You're crazy. not doing me Nick, any you're justice. You're not doing me any justice. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so he looked around, he looked, he said, who is that? 
said, and so he said, and then he was like, I'm the real Quincy. I said, no, I'm the real Quincy, right? And so we go back and forth. And so what happened was Quincy thought, when I started doing my impersonation of him, he thought that somebody had started playing a recording Oh like, as my like, God. As like part of the party. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Playing that, just inserts crazy. from Quincy Jones. Because he, he was saying things that like Quincy would say. Oh, like, right, you I know, you, you, you went behind the is, man. You, you went know? behind the is, man. You just, you know, not, you're not solid, man. Not at all. Man. You don't have it. Right? And so <laughs> Quin, when Quincy finally saw me because he sits in the same seat all night. Yeah. All so night. you have to circle around and get in yeah. line. Oh, to get yeah. To him. yeah. And when I got to him, he's like, that, that was you, huh? Cut that shit out. <laughs> 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 he banged on you. Cut that shit out, man. But you know, right? <laughs> Quincy a gangster. Quincy a gangster too, though. He'll fuck you up. Oh yes, he will. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, that was you know that was that our moment. was such that was a um, moment. That was so that was a really great night. Really dope. That was really a dope. really great night. Uh, and listen, I was yeah. so happy to be in that space, and I know yeah. you know you 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 frequent those spaces because um, like you just have a different a different kind of gift, man. Like that's just. Mm out of this world and to, you know, to the Quincy Joneses and, and Jimmy Jam and to the Jimmy Jam. That's yeah. Yeah. word, yeah. You know, and, and, oh, man, and, and those to, are my godfathers, man, my musical like godfathers. Like to, to yeah. some of the biggest people yeah. who have ever, ever done it on every mm, level, mm. like they look to you. Wow. Which right. is, cr- I mean, it's crazy. Wow. So we, what we like to do, mm-hmm. we like to start at the very beginning. Damn. Like, like, when did you know? Mm. Or when did somebody tell you? Yeah. Like, you got something. Wow. Like, let's start there let's and start then work there. our way up to yeah. overseas and <laughs> <laughs> Carnegie Hall and, and Carnegie you know, Hall, these special the, places. Yeah, yeah. The White House. The White House. Oh, the Kennedy do Center. Not forget. Do not forget. <laughs> do not forget. Twice, do not forget. Twice. Oh, I mean, twice. a couple times. Just a couple times. <laughs> You know, you know what? I, I have know. to say this really quick because I think we, I know we come from, from very similar backgrounds. I can't remember what, what, are you I like come from the streets. Out? I'm from streets. Church. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, so no church. No. No. No, I say that because sometimes it can be very <laughs> difficult for us to talk about ourselves Yeah. because we feel like that's not being humble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's how I think we were raised, right? In a, we, in a, in we, a way, you know? We were raised like that. And 100%. so it's like, I have, I had to almost, it took a while for me to be able to recognize you have this God-sized gift mm-hmm. because God gave it to you. Absolutely. So it's okay for you to lean into it as long as you continue to like, you know, give it right back. Yeah. But you can't like almost diminish your gift because you're diminishing God. Well, yeah, I mean, so it's, you, I, you I think, yeah. yeah, we, weren't, yeah. we weren't always taught to raise our hand and say, yeah. I got it, I can do it. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? And exactly. so, you know, like this platform, like, a, you know, this is for you to raise your hand and say, yeah, yeah this is this is what I do. Okay, so White House twice. Yeah. <laughs> Standing ovation by the And she's gonna look at the twice. nigga who might not never <laughs> get invited to the White House. <laughs> Me. That's fine. It's fine. fine. Yeah, they're gonna go through your security profile. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's why I got it the first time. Yeah, that's different. why I got the White House the first time, literally. Why somebody else? Can so get many it? people could not pass the background check. Oh, wow. That's literally how it happened the first time. Okay, so a lot of singers. But go, but going, but going to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I said, so a lot of singers sell dope. Is what you're saying. Okay, or you know smoke what? it or whatever. Yeah, or, 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 or something. <laughs> or something. At, at I would time, rather y'all I, but, sell it than smoke it. But, but you have to remember, at that time under Obama, they were, it's like hey, any yeah. li- it, like any anything. little tiny thing. Anything. It's like, Traffic you know. Ticket, nah, yeah, you can't yeah, get in here. Yeah, because they were, it. yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But, but yeah, the beginning, man, the beginning, beginning, you know, my earliest memory is music. So like my mom said, like at two years old, I was harmonizing. Like, and I to me, like when I look at somebody who's two years old, it's like, that was scary. They like could find yeah. harmony yeah. like that. But stay I was- Stay on their note. Stay on their <laughs> note. You know, I was like, I remember this little wooden piano that that my parents had gotten me and, you know, I'll be making little songs for my sister around three or four years old. So my earliest memories were music, but I say all that to say my parents, both very musical um, in the church. I just only saw them use it in church. And that was it. So I thought that's what I would do. That was it. I didn't really see any, you know, me having it as a career. I just thought I would just serve in church. And it really wasn't until um, 
when I went away to college, I joined this this girls group, and that was like my first taste of just like being in the studio. You want to give us the name of the group? It was it, it was like the gospel version of uh, Destiny's Child. It was called Forgiven. And we were all hot I like too. That name. Yeah, we were all hot yeah. Too. We were all hot. We were hot too. Sometimes you know what I'm saying. But like we were, we were cute. We were cute. We were four cute girls, and you know, I say that because we were packaged that way. Mm-hmm. And um, we were, we had a little deal on the table for Black Ground Records. No way. <laughs> but the Lord said, it. <laughs> anyway. Yes, Wait, but how does how does that work in <laughs> gospel, right? Because obviously, is that a thing where you're like you said, we were packaged as a group that could sing, but also because of what the group looked like. Right. Is that a thing in gospel music? It can be. It can be? For sure. Okay, okay. And I think at that time, too, it's like, you know, that was just, the, and as we know in this industry, people are always looking for the next, what already Whatever. exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're winning. We need a gospel version of that. And then to me, Mary Mary came and that's what, even though it's just the two of them, mm-hmm. it was that kind yeah, of beautiful, energy. Beautiful, great voices. Of beautiful, yeah, yeah. you know, vibrant, yep. actually dressed now. like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sexy, which Absolutely. was like, you know, very difficult. So, you know, but but yeah, so that was really my first taste of just being in what I would say the industry of just going to the studio and writing and producing and just that feeling just. Like, okay, this is it. So, but you're not in Los Angeles at this point. No, I'm, I'm going to school at this HBCU in Huntsville, Alabama called Oakwood College. Huntsville. Oakwood Huntsville. University now. We know yeah. a lot about Huntsville. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Huntsville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Huntsville. Yeah. Huntsville. Yeah. Huntsville. Huntsville love you, baby. Huntsville. They love to take a ring. Huntsville. Oh, hey, what? Huntsville. What? Oh, yeah. we, uh, might be, we might be going there next week. Listen, <laughs> Tell them I said what's if up. If they don't know me nowhere, else, oh, they know they me. They know in you in Huntsville. Wow. Yeah. So like A and M, that whole yeah. I'm All a, of it. I'm a product of the Bible Belt. Wow. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Yeah. That's where my career started. Like yeah. promo shows. Yeah. All through the Bible Belt in a van. Mm. In a van. Staying at wow. motels. Yeah. Where you walk into your room from outside. Were they quite motels or were they hotels? <laughs> But they don't have an HRIM on it. Do you know which ones I'm talking about? I know exactly about. what you're talking about. <laughs> Both. Yeah, I know, I know some yeah. I know some Both of them. Yeah, some I know the ones you got you get them from outside. You get them yeah, from you go you go up yeah. the stairs and you, yeah. you go they down that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. you get your key yeah. from from yeah. the little lady in the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've been there. You've been there. She don't want no trouble. You've been there. You've been there. Um yeah. so is this the first time that that you felt like you were um being recognized on that level? Like this could you could have a career in this like you were special in this place it wasn't so you know interestingly enough i always felt like i was special like my that my gift was special mm-hmm. i knew that very very young but it that didn't necessarily mean it had to be a career mm-hmm. you know but this was the first time where it was like okay there's nothing else i even want to remotely do yeah this is it and so that was that was like a pivotal moment but to like say like when I was more settled into like I feel like what I can bring just this industry, that was later on. I don't know if you want me to skip to that moment, but that was that was a little later on where I felt settled. Like I don't care how long this takes. Mm-hmm. I already I know where I'm where I'm supposed to be. But that was a little later. There there was that was a pivotal performance and a pivotal moment. So forbidden, forgiven. Yeah. Which forgiven. Is a, I like I like forbidden. Uh-oh. I don't know what I would have changed. I would have like changed your name. Y'all took a, a meeting with me. I'd have been like, yeah. Forbidden. Y'all look forbidden that. to me. I like, I like forgiven. Forgiven. Which, it was which, cute. Which and you we, had the little Roman yeah. numeral, we had the little Roman numeral four. That you need forgiveness for. <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where the skeletons yeah. are. Exactly. Oh, hey. Yeah. We all got them. Um, so yeah. what is in bet- what is in between that? Because there's got to be some yeah. pieces. Where- oh, yeah. Y'all it's a lot. It's a lot. Give us this so the girls group didn't work out. Okay. You know, um, I think, you know, we were all super young and had had different interests. And I think kind of looking back in retrospect, I was I was such a intense person. I think it was like a little overwhelming sometimes. Like mm. it was, um, I was like, let's do this. Like, forget it. I, I remember calling my mom, up my mom and I was like, I don't even want to finish college. Cause I already found it. Like this yeah. is it. I don't. I. I don't need to look any further. She was like, "No, we're not gonna do that." So I did get my degree. I. I got my degree in music, emphasis piano. I got. A, I graduated cum laude. Come on now. From. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're from. Go, yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not gonna skip past yeah. that. From Oka College, 
Um, but I, you know, it. I, I just said this. This is it. And and for me, I just loved music. That I kind of started more off on the writing side. The writing and um, so right after I graduated, that's when I you know met up with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis around the same time that we connect. I'm trying to figure out how did we connect. I'm not was sure. Was it through Harvey and Damon? Were you at like uh, at the Underdogs back in the day? We met. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not all the way sure, but I mean, it, it's possible because obviously I was part of the Underdogs with them. So um, it had to have been that then. Yeah. But I, at that time, I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't working with them at that time. Yeah, I wasn't working with them at that time. No, I remember you, you and Ronnie. Me and Lil Ronnie. Oh, yeah, Lil yeah, Ronnie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually left the Underdogs the second time because of Lil Ronnie. Got it. Yeah, yeah. They kicked yeah. him out, so I was like, "Y'all can't kick my little homie out because that's oh, my guy." So two thousand four. So I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, two thousand four. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, if y'all gonna, if y'all gonna kick him out, yeah, he coming with me. Yeah. So literally, like Lil Ronnie came. And lived at my studio house. That was my studio house that you used to yes, come to and, I know. and record. And Ronnie was because he was he wasn't from LA. He wasn't from California. So I'm like, listen, to you figure it out. Yeah, you with me. You my guy. So. Oh my god, what was that song that we did? What the, wait? What's it gonna take to wake up every oh, day yeah. for to love it? You should, for you to be happy. I gotta buy that record. What on, I yeah. used to love, I hate. I'm dreading every day. So. Something to feel Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Something's I, I, gonna I, 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 change. No, can't go on this way. It's not the way I want it. Nothing's That's going wrong. So, going right. What are we doing wrong? Remember? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now as you're singing it, I remember I, that. I don't even like the Jill Notes of Purple. No, but the, <laughs> the, the funny thing is, <laughs> like it. she sang a song that we wrote together. Yes. But what I remember the most was when you came and sang for me the first time. You sang NDRE, Ready for Love. Oh my God, did I? I never forgot that. Because I'm like, this is amazing. Wow. And that's the wow. song. Like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did I just do it a cappella or did I play the piano? You played. You really? played and sang. And I was like, oh, this is, I ain't never seen nothing like this in my Wait, life. Like, I don't geez. ever sing that song. I need to bring that back. You need to bring it back. Wow. You need to bring it back. That is the India. shout out to NDRE. Yeah. Right. That is one of my favorite songs of all time. And I just remember you, you know, because that's how people that don't know the music business, it's kind of how it goes. You, yeah. When you go meet somebody yeah. and, you know, you're showing your gift. Yeah. You usually just, you know, and I think you might have asked me like, okay, so what, what do you, what, do you what, like? what songs? Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is a whole nother cheat code that you guys have because you both <laughs> play and sing to be yeah. able to kind of be a little jukebox. Right. And right. I was just like, right, this is insane. Like, this is literally insane. I'm going to find the song you just sang. No, I, I have Those it somewhere. Those were magical times I know I have it on a drive or somewhere. Yeah. 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 I got it somewhere. I'm oh, my it. God. I, I can I literally see your place now. Like, I remember yeah. the room and everything. Like, how it was, where we would where we would record the vocals. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then I met you was around the spirit. Was your intro to L.A.? Yes, okay. it was. Okay. It was. I didn't it know was. that. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And then I met you around the same time. Um, underdogs. That, that's the thing. The underdogs, they would always just like, just sick me on anybody who would come through. So like, if they had <laughs> right. Tyrese would come through, yeah. sing her, Same. sing her. Yeah. I remember Tyrese, <laughs> I never forget that. He was chewing some gum when I started to sing and he said, I done chewed this gum. <laughs> <laughs> and then he had this assistant and he made him spit the gum in his hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Ty Tyrese. Tyrese. I love you some Tyrese. I'm oh, you gotta sorry. Stop. You gotta stop. But it was, oh my God, I will, I will never forget those early moments. Greg, Phil, and Gaines were coming. So you were no different. And um, you came in one time and they were like, wait, sing, sing something for Tank. And I did Never Felt This Way. Wow. Brian McKnight. Wow. And this all, was, all this was. The, <laughs> no one else can sing oh them but the God. artist and me. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God. Da, 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 da. You know, the, the piano intro. That's crazy. And um, I I finished singing and I will never, this was like, remember I told you, like there was this pivotal moment for me from what you said. And the first thing you said was, you're anointed. And I remember thinking, what a weird thing to say after I sing what I consider to be a secular like song. song. Mm, yeah. And because again, like the way I grew up, everything is like, there's, sacred 
and then there's secular. There's hot or cold. Hot or cold. There's, there's no blurring. No, that's no. What, that's what we're taught. That's so, what we're so taught. So that's what it is sacred and, and secular? And secular. Yes. I never knew the act. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I'm learning yeah. something new every We're going to bring my street brother along. Yeah, <laughs> man. Go bring you along. Oh, bring me to the church, man. <laughs> it's glorious. <laughs> Tabernacle. <laughs> Make his praise glorious. But so for me, that was that was like that's when I kind of had to start that that introspection of realizing that my gift was sacred, not what I what yeah. song I sang. Period. 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 But it was when you said that I was like, that's such a weird thing for someone to say you're anointed after I. But it was like you felt the God in me. Hundred percent. And that's why you said that. And then I realized, okay, this is this is not something where you can turn off. And even further, taking it a step further, I grew up Seventh Day, Ooh. to where, you know, you don't sing, you know, any do anything secular like on Friday night and Saturday. So like in the beginning, I wasn't doing shows during that time, because of that reason. I thought, okay, so no, all of a sudden, no shows or any not not just shows, but no anything, just on anything Friday doing and sessions. I you would. You would Couldn't make you would and... you would make it around the other days, and so that okay. was kind of the beginning of when I said. And, and Kirk Whalem also was was very instrumental in that, and just helping me to see that your your gift doesn't it doesn't turn off the period. the period it doesn't period. it's like it's you're a vessel, I, and it's about what you bring that the light through that vessel. I struggled with that early early on because because of the teachings. Yeah. Because of it always being pushed that, you know, um, secular music was, you know, the gateway to hell. Yeah. In a sense. Pretty and, much. Yeah. And here I am in this R&B place, you know, with this anointing, with this calling on my mm -hmm. life. I'm like, mm -hmm. what am I doing here? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it took a while for me to accept that this was from him and not mm. from anybody else. Mm -hmm. This opportunity for me to share my gift all over the world and to, in essence, put my life on paper and then ultimately on record. Yeah. And it make room for me. Yeah. You know, it it it, it provides me a place to live. It, it provides sure. food for my family. It, I was like, that can only come from one place. Yeah. yeah. And it took me a while. I was tormented yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people would say to me, you a church boy. Like, you like, what you doing out here? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What you mm -hmm. doing in this club? Like, yeah. You, and I didn't I didn't necessarily fit in. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at a certain point, I just stopped trying to. I just accepted exactly. being Exactly. Exactly. You know I, I, mean? I feel the same way because that's, you almost don't fit in on either side because you recognize that there's more. For me, it was like, there's more that I want to say. Yes. There's more that I want to. Ex there's yeah. a, there's more ways that I want to express myself. So, so you, it, it can't only be gospel. The, to me, gospel is how I live my life, the way I treat people, and and that would be my response to every time someone say, "Oh, you know, you make sure you never stop singing for Jesus." I'm like, well, it's really more about living. Yeah, right. Yeah. So right. kind of what I'm gathering. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, my own little layman terms. Yeah. Uh, you guys are like musically mixed. <laughs> right. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, you know, you meet somebody who has one parent that's one and another, yeah. or whatever, and they got to figure it out mm -hmm. because they don't truly fit either side. Yeah. But when you're really talented. Yeah eventually they all gravitate towards you. It's what I found just yeah. watching, even with Tank, yeah. where it's like, I'll see the church and the, the, the gospel singers and the pastors well. be like, yeah, so can Tank come perform at the church? I'm like, yeah. what would you like for him to perform? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if he has that selection, but he said, what? Oh, he can play. He can play and sing a little song said, at the no, back. Yeah. What's, what's wild it's, is it's crazy. Yeah, they'll ask for the song. They'll songs. Ask for the songs. Damn. I'm like, so y'all won't win. We they they <laughs> want it. What? I've been to. You're, you're doing it at the church banquets or church or the... events where what? like I, it's like it's just it it's so far away from the traditional thing that has been taught. Like I feel like now 
you know, especially for those pastors that I that I perform for. I mean, like Keith Battles, who's a good friend of mine, mm-hmm. and but uh, Pastor Gray, and mm-hmm. like they understand the reality of a thing. Yeah. Like when it's time for them to to lay down with their wives. Hello. Um, they're not playing Fred Hammond. No, and we love Fred Hammond. We love Fred Hammond. Not, love for, Hammond. That, not for that they're, moment. They're, they're not playing Kirk Franklin. No. You know, no. you know what they're gonna they're gonna need. They're gonna need. Some, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. They're gonna need some, some wind. They're, they're gonna need some dirty. Need some, ooh, yeah. They're gonna need some. Ooh, ooh yeah. yeah. Yes, they are. They're gonna need some. Ooh, yeah. They're gonna need some. Ooh, yeah. They're gonna need it. Oh, yeah. what did I do? Yeah. Oh, did I, you started it. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, you started it. And so it's, it had to be. It's it's understanding that yes. that makes it yes. practical. It's human. It's human. It's human. Don't be and so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Understand yeah, what's happening exactly, here. Exactly. Exactly. And there, there's, and you know, there's been so many people who have started in the church. And and to your point, yes, it's kind of mixed where we're on one side and, and, and there's another side. But then there's also the people like us who are on the other side who are people who just had the courage mm-hmm. to do more. Right. So we're, we, I still understand that world. I still very much, like when I played, you know, Dorinda Clark Cole, I very much knew that world and just that whole ecosystem, you know, like it's, it was, it was very real to me, but I also know the other side. And sometimes it's you having the courage to say, I want to do more. And that's why I love Yolanda Adams, who, she just does whatever she wants. If they ask her to do a tribute to, to you know, Shaka Khan, or you know, she's going to do that. Boss. She's going to do. She's going to do the the Ray Charles. She and I both did this. Uh, my second White House show together <laughs> with Yolanda <laughs> you know, Adams. This with time. Yolanda. <laughs> okay. This, this, this yeah. floss is just. I don't have a drink because this is yeah. you know. But I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm so here's the thing. Today. When she sings with Yolanda Adams, oh. they actually sing together. Right? Oh. When I sang with Yolanda Adams. Uh-huh. I had to I had to take a step back and and let Yolanda sing. Be Yolanda. Um, well, we, we didn't we didn't do a duet. We were on the same we same bill. I, we were on the same bill. So okay, I actually okay. did a duet with Anthony Hamilton. We did the right time. More that was that was a tribute to Ray Charles. More floss. More yeah, more floss. Love. 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 <laughs> so um but yeah, no, I, I say all that to, I don't know what our original point. We've kind of gone around. It's fine. It's fine. But, um, so we do. Listen, this is here's here's the other thing about open. this. This is our show. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever the fuck we want. Okay. I see I see you hoe ass niggas in the comments. Ah, I see it. What, what they see. saying? What they saying? It's irrelevant. It, it, irrelevant. It doesn't Thank, matter. There it, it you doesn't go. matter because it's not your podcast. It's, not the, well, it's ours. No. So we yeah. will have whoever, whoever we want on the show, <laughs> and we will talk about whatever yeah. we want yeah. to. I love there, that. There, there. I love Go back that. to where we were. Yeah. About you being great. This this ultimately <laughs> this is what no, this is why we brought you yeah. here because of your gift you. and what you do. Obviously, we've known you for years at this point and you know, throughout the years, but we really we wanna put the spotlight on people we believe that are great. Yeah, I appreciate that. Flat out deeply. And really and really talk about it and talk about that journey of how they got there. Yeah. And I think you were probably at we, we, we were getting off of uh, we off the girl bidding. group, and you were yeah. in L.A. Yeah. You just got to L.A. Talking about how we met and yeah. the songs. And that's right. So were you signed to Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis? I was a part of their writing camp. Okay. So, yeah, it was almost like I wasn't technically signed, but we were just, I was on all of their projects that they were doing. So that's actually how I got, like, a lot of my little, you know, movie credits. So I would be on Akilah and the Bee, and I would be, you know, doing... Backgrounds. Me and my daughter's favorite movie. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Kiki. Yeah, yeah. yeah. who's lo- who? I love we what she's love been Kiki. saying Kiki in the in the in the news. Yeah, she yeah. she's incomparable. So yeah, let's just start there. Um, but but yeah, it's so I got a lot, Will and Grace, all, a lot of a lot of different stuff that during that time, whatever they were on, mm-hmm. I was on. You know, whatever they were writing for, whatever. So that's actually when I I don't know if you guys remember the movie Jumping the Broom. Yeah. I'll, so I'll that was. That did you? You want you wanted, you wanted to be who, what? What character I don't did know you? Because ah! I was going to ask. Was could it, you? Was it could you give us your? What do they call it? A monologue? Is that what they call it? Yeah. yeah. No, you don't remember. Okay, ran <laughs> my line. I was oh. I was supposed to be D Ray's character. Oh, yeah. you would have been funny in that one. But he was funny too. I he tri- was funny I, too. I but you know, it's so <laughs> funny. I, I, I had. I'm, I'm doing. I'm, so I'm doing an audition, and uh-huh. you know, I'm just being natural. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And there's some grapes on the table. 
And I saw it like, I'm like, you know, I see the grapes. I'm going to use the grapes as a surprise. Grab a grape, <laughs> chew a grape. <coughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> I started dying off Literally of grape. Literally choked. In the, middle, <laughs> in the middle of the audition. Only you. Bro. Only me. Only you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. grapes alone, man. They're not your grapes. <laughs> Y'all got some water. <laughs> and, and, and what's the name was looking at me? Uh, oh, the Twinkie what's, Bird? What's, no, no. What's my lady that used to be uh, that was um, um, married to Babyface? Uh, Tracy, yeah. Tracy, Tracy Edmonds. Tracy, Tracy yeah. Edmonds. Tracy Edmonds. She was part of me. Yeah, yeah. Tracy yeah, Edmonds was, was looking at me like, why did you grab my grape? Like, why did you just look at me? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Not only were they not community grapes, <laughs> they were someone else's grapes. He might have been okay. Tracy's grapes. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was doing too much. Yeah. I, you haven't been in any you of her movies. You were just trying to be in the moment. You haven't been in That's any of her all. movies now. Right? I haven't been in any of her movies. Oh. Say I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way better now. <laughs> Talk to me. Call me, man. <laughs> Oh my God! You took her grapes, and she said no thanks. Yeah, the grape, the grape said no thanks to me. Yeah, you just don't. So you took the, like, so you so took I, the route. I, wrote, I actually, of that was like my. Fr I was getting more into the writing. Like I said, I just loved. I just wanted to be just a part of the process. Mm. I didn't have to be, you know, on stage. It was just writing and producing, and so I learned so much during those years with Jimmy Jam and Terry. And so my kind yeah, of like my big. I would say like my big break mm -hmm. was when I was on Tick Six's album. Um, who I consider to be like my brothers. Mm -hmm. And I was doing this song called Someone to Watch Over Me. And of course, y'all know Stevie Wonder loves him some Take Six. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, um, I don't know Stevie Wonder. Oh, I thought I'm, you said I'm, you didn't know Take Six. <laughs> I don't know them either. I don't, ooh, man, I gotta, I gotta accomplish something in this business <laughs> at some point in my it, life. Stop it, stop it. I don't know the guys. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, Stevie heard and he was like, who is this girl? I want to meet her. Um, you know, and so okay, I'll tell you guys that story. That story is, is there champagne funny. on here? Because if not, <laughs> she's probably poured it all over me at this point <laughs> with all of the Stevie <laughs> Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder hey, wants to know is. who's that girl. <laughs> who's that after girl? I'm on the take that six girl song. She's so kind. <laughs> Go ahead. Stevie Wonder wants to meet you. Tell Stevie the story. Yeah. Stevie yeah. Wonder wants to meet you. Okay, but let, I'm gonna just tell you how. Off I was. Yes. Okay. So I'll give a little background. As I told you guys, with being with Jimmy and Terry, everybody would come through there, you know? So I remember when Maurice White was there. And I, I, I treasure these moments. I didn't realize how special it was. Earth, I knew it was special. Earth, wind, and fire. Yeah. Earth, he's the yeah. earth, wind, and fire. And I remember I played and sang something. And he's like, girl, you got some chords. And I'm just like, just those kind of moments would happen there all the time. Right. So I'm prefacing the story by saying that. So I go and I meet Stevie and, and uh, Stephanie, who still works with him. I love her to death. I just talked to her not too long ago. Um, she wanted to surprise him with me just showing up to the studio. So I go to the studio and you know how Stevie is, he was in the middle of doing something. So he was like recording something else. So I'm just kind of like on the couch or sort of so somewhere waiting. So an hour goes by, another hour goes by, and I'm just like, yeah, I gotta go, you know, I gotta go. Like I have, I got shit to do. You know? yeah. <laughs> Somebody tell Stevie I was here. I <laughs> but that's you know not I mean? it. I'm not even done. That's not even Tra the, Traffic bomb that's start. Not, that's not even the bad part. Let me tell you. <laughs> tell like, I like, stopped by. Who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> Please don't, please don't air this part. <laughs> we got to show. We got to show. We got to show. <laughs> we have to show. <laughs> okay, but that's not even it. That's not even the bad part. So, so I talked. So I talked to them, and uh, I was like, <laughs> "Let me just." <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Oh so God, hard. I was on one. God, man, he protects babies and fools. So, <laughs> oh so anyway, God. so I'm like, I meet him. I'm just kind of like, okay, cool. I met, I met Stevie Wonder, and so I was just like, they were like, oh, and he was like, well, you know, can you come by tomorrow? And I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I knew I liked you when I met you years ago. I'm gonna cry. Oh, shit. oh God. Oh, God. Hey, Stevie, I don't work on Friday. So. It's Friday. I ain't coming through. No, it wasn't even a Friday. That one makes it worse. Oh it, wasn't even, it wasn't even Friday. So, so I, I bounced. Nah, nigga, I ain't. <laughs> I so I, I, I call my sister and I'm like, oh, you know, I just met Stevie. You know, he was busy all the time. I just got to say hi. That's it. And she's like, well, what happened? She said, you know, what did they say? <laughs> I can't look at you. I can't look at you. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I got some things to do. <laughs> I don't think I can make it back. She was like, Shalaya, that she doesn't curse, but she would have said, "That's fucking Stevie Wonder. That's, Stevie, That's Wonder. Stevie, Wonder. Stevie Wonder." And I was like, "What if I done?" <laughs> so tomorrow, the next day, I call. They don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bet you they don't. So I just showed up. I literally just showed up. I just went to the studio and I will never forget. I can literally see where everybody was sitting and he was, he wasn't there yet. And so I, when he came in, somebody must have said something and I laughed and he was like, you came back. He recognized, he recognized. my laugh. Yeah. Wow. Those hiding, literally those hiding meeting, senses. That's meeting, just meeting me yesterday. And he's like, and the rest is history. I mean, after that, we just connected so, so deeply. And I went, I remember going to the piano and we were just singing. And later on that um, year, so that was, he was about to go on tour. So that Christmas I sang for his house full of toys, you know, the show he does every mm -hmm. year. Um, and I did Who Could Imagine a King. And I just remember thinking like, oh my God, am I really butt cheek to butt cheek with Stevie yeah. Wonder? I'm sitting at the piano. He's like sitting at the Rhodes. And that was just kind of the start of to be probably one of the most beautiful friendships that I have in this world. Wow. And I tell people like everything that you think about him, you know, when you when you hear like back to what you were saying, how, how certain songs conjure up certain memories, you know, when you hear, you know, you are the sunshine of my life or my Sheree or how it feels like light. Mm -hmm. He really is like that. He is that light. Mm -hmm. And um you know, I've never heard him. We joke. I mean, we we talk shit with each other all the time, just all up front on stage. Like, just we have the most hilarious. Have relationship. you let him drive your car? Huh? <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just it's like this. It's, it, there's these rumors that Stevie, I know. That Stevie Wonder drives. No. And, well, I don't know. I haven't experienced that with him. Okay. Okay. I have every so you, time we've so been together. Not really, we're being y'all we not really driven. those. Yeah, y'all ain't that close then, because you ain't. You ain't like well, that we're, being, we're, we're we've been driven. We've been driven. No, we always have a driver. <laughs> no, no, we we um when we had we had Ray Parker Jr. on. Yeah. And he told the story about how like you know they would let Stevie drive in the open, like not, on not, the road. Not that kind of open, but you know <laughs> they let him drive. They let him uh -huh. get behind the wheel. Yeah, uh -huh. They let him get behind that wheel yeah. uh -huh. and roll with him. I fumbled my Stevie, uh, my Stevie moment. Oh, he, what I, was yours? I was so, I was so starstruck. Yeah. And I had sang Stevie songs for all sorts of, of weddings. Of course, of course. And Stevie Wonder walks into my show. I was performing at Universal City Walk. Was that like a BB King's up there? What was that up there? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. It was. It was a performance. Yeah. And Stevie Wonder shows up oh, and comes on stage goodness. with me. And we sit down on my piano. Oh. And he starts playing and singing my song. Oh and my god. I'm supposed to go back and sing his song with his lyrics and play it. And I blank. <laughs> I I blank. Yeah. I don't know the words to ribbon in the sky. A that song you that you've I've been sung. Yeah. A yeah. thousand yeah. times. He brought me a gift like a recorder and a microphone and oh all this my stuff. You do a lot goodness. of fumbling, brother. Fumble. You know First, a, first the grapes. A, to, yeah, to be, a, to be an ex football player, you know, you play football. Bro, I got, I got some, and I never football. fumble playing football. Well, but, you know what's crazy? I play football too. What? Yeah, Where? halfback on offense, safety on defense. Where? I played in, in high school and college. 
What? Huh? <laughs> I, I mean, not like professional. Yeah, but, you right. know, I, I play in the intramurals. Yeah. So you're an athlete. I'm an athlete. You just putting pads on, or you out there just just tackling people, no just pads. Tackling no oh, pads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. Going different. Yeah, you're going. I'm different. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I respect. <laughs> oh, new respect. Yeah. Whole another See? level. Yeah, new. Another level. You just went to another place with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Half yeah. back. And what do yeah. you, half back and safety? Yeah, safety. Okay. Mm -hmm. And safety, and that quick. means she likes to hit people. Oh, tap them. Yeah. Tap and them quick, and quick. Yeah. Last resort, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Stevie. <laughs> Go back to Stevie. Stevie oh. Wonder. So um, what, does it ever come to you? Do you ever, do you ever sing the lyric or does he prompt you? Like, what What no, happened? No, let's, let's look it off of my Stevie ah! Because yours is way better. Okay. You go from yeah. Stevie, you have this amazing moment. Take six, Stevie comes in. Stevie. Now you build this friendship and... and and I and see then so many I don't spaces. hear from then I don't hear from him for years. From Stevie? From Stevie. Okay. For years. And and that's I always tell people like you don't reach Stevie, Stevie reaches you. Yeah. And it wasn't until I did a uh, um when Whitney passed, God rest her soul. Mm -hmm. And I did I literally was just at this one of my dearest friends, Tony Shepard, I was at his house and I was just at the keyboard and I just went through like just some of my favorite songs of hers and it kind of went like semi-viral like a lot of people like that were her dancers this is after she passed her dancers singers best friends family they all reached out to me and even her daughter reached out bobby christina may she also rest in peace and she was like when i hear you sing i feel my mom's spirit with me and if my if my mom was here she would be so proud of you so somebody sent stevie that and he, they were like, there's a, there's this girl. She's like singing. Her name is she, she he's like Shalea. They're like, yeah, yeah, that's it. So he calls me. And then after that, we just stay connected. But, you know, going through different lives. He, I think he was going through a divorce at that time. You know, just different life. It was, I just didn't hear from him for a couple of years. I went through a divorce, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I had to also learn to be very specific. I remember Stevie asked me, he said, what do you want me to do for you? Wow. And because I was so afraid of coming off. How do you answer off, that? Yeah. How do you answer, do you answer that? that? Thank you for saying that. Yeah. How do you answer that? Because I didn't, A, I didn't know how to answer that. And mm -hmm. B, I didn't want to come across like so, okay, I need you to do this, this, mm -hmm. this, this, and that. I was just like, I just want you to just, you know, keep loving me the way you do. And what I'm what I've learned now since then, guys need you to be a little bit more direct and specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause that I, was that was yeah. that was that was weird. That was a weird <laughs> answer. That yeah, was a weird yeah. answer. Yeah. But I didn't know what else to say. I just because I didn't want to come across like I was, I'm like, does the NDA come along? <laughs> <laughs> what you just said to me, because whoo. <laughs> what? Just don't yeah. take your hands. He off just me. asked, he <laughs> asked it very, nah. very direct. What do you want me to do for you? And you know, I think when I look back at some pivotal moments in my career, I'm very happy with where I am right now. But I, I know a lot of people would have asked me many times, like, I just don't understand why you're not a household name or, or this or that. I don't know if it's because I answer Stevie that way. But, <laughs> <laughs> hysterical. Right, but, right. you know, I think sometimes it, it, in the past, it might have been a mindset that it was coming across like maybe perhaps I wasn't hungry enough. Mm -hmm. But I was, but I just was doing it my way. Your way. And I, I still feel confident in the way that I've done things. Um, but I do look at right and left terms and, and wonder if, if I was a little bit more direct, if that would have made a difference. Who knows? I mean, the question I ask myself most is, are you enjoying what you're doing right now? And very much so. Okay, so before we get yeah. to yeah. Clark Sisters. Yeah. I'd be seeing you on stage with David Foster. <laughs> yeah. My guy. Yeah. Shout out to David Foster. David Foster. Yeah. Who started that's, off as just a session player. That's just. That's David just Foster crazy. had a cable car at his house. Just a cable car. Is it? Is yeah, yeah. So you know what that is or not? <laughs> absolutely. So obviously in San Francisco, we have cable cars that uh -huh. will take you from down the hill all the way up the hill. And that's, yeah. we're kind of known for that in San Francisco. Yeah. He had one at his house. He just that was that, the Malibu one. Yeah, it would, yeah. It would take you. It would take you from the grounds up to you know to the house. I, I, was a, I, I was I was I wasn't there during that era. Yeah. That, that era. How did that? I need to know how that. 
Stevie I'm still, I'm, I'm sure Stevie he can still afford it. It's guy. like it's he's, like he's kind of like my north star. He and Ricky Minor are kind of like my Ricky Minor. Ricky Minor are like yeah. kind of like my north. So so I meet Stevie through Take Six. I meet Ricky Minor through Stevie Wonder because he was MD, MDing the show. He would mm-hmm. always MD all Stevie's um, House Full of Toys show. Then I meet Quincy Jones through Ricky Minor because he's doing some event and then me and Q just hit off. I know I'm like going all over the place, but it's just, but that's like kind of like the branching out. Mm -hmm. Like that's how, and so then I met David Foster because David and Stevie were um, doing a record together that probably won't see the light of day, but it was such a great record. It was like with the London Philharmonic Orchestra, like his, his songs with the orchestra. And um, and so I I sang um, as I was I was Stevie brought me in to wow. to do that and so and it is crazy he he changed it to six eighth like they just made me like it was it was it was it was epic it was it was cold it was amazing that just sounded crazy. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, just how she just, you know, she starts speaking the language. Oh, man. And then she went to it and she tapped on oh, the leg. Oh, yeah, I you can know, hear the progression. We have, a, we have yeah. a lot of discussions in this whole R&B thing oh. about, you know, the gifts. Yeah. Wow. You know, who can, who can't. Yeah. Can they really this, that, and the other. Yeah. And then someone like yourself comes wow. on here without <laughs> saying it. It just fully stamps like, okay, I'm different. Uh, I'm different. I'm different. To me, if, if I got to say it, then I already lost. You know, you gotta you gotta know it for yourself. Exactly. You know, it's that. It's that. I would love to hear that. When you actually slow it down, it's like, damn, this song is deep. Like it's it's just incredible. So anyway, that they were working on that project. So that's how I met David, and and I will never forget. It was like one, two in the morning, and David was on his way. You know how David gets when he's about to leave somewhere. It's like it was, you know, and Steve was like. Yeah, I wanted to sing something for you. He's like, okay, well, just a just a verse and a chorus. This is David Foster. <laughs> just a verse and a chorus. I'm, I'm about to go. So I go to the piano. I'm going to play some song. And he was like, okay, very nice. I remember I called my dad. I was like, dad, I just met David, but I don't think I made an impact. And he was like, no, nah, you made an impact. I was like, no, dad. I, I, he was just kind of like shrugged me off. Like, okay, nice. That was cute. That was nice. Uh that's what you said about maybe seven, six, seven months later. That's when he called me, and that was like the first event I did with him. And we had been, we've been touring together for years now. You know, uh, he was on my PBS special. I was on his. Yeah, you got a PBS uh, special. Quincy Jones presents Shalaya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, boy, you know what? This is how I know she's been hanging around all these high levels. Because this is what they do. This is what they do. Oh. It's just, it's just. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It's blase. Yeah, it's blase. It's, 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 you know? It's bow. Yeah. Bow. Bow. Yeah. It's, no, it's two hands. Yes. I will never forget meeting with David Foster mm. and realizing that he was using a Grammy as a paperweight. Uh, well, he's got 16 of them, so. He was using it <laughs> as a paperweight. So yeah. the paper don't fly away. So the paper don't fly away. Yeah. I was yeah. like, come on, man. I know. Are you serious? Some, you gonna put this somewhere with some lights on it? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Trust me, he's got he's got no, he got, yeah, he got the he's thing. got them yeah, all yeah. sixteen, all but, of them all but, stacked up. But, but this day, you know, randomly, I don't yeah, know, but yeah. it's, it's literally a, it's a paperweight. Paperweight. It's a Grammy. Yeah. yeah, that's David for you. Yeah. I love him, and you know, just recently he, you know, we we had this conversation, and he's like, I just see, you know, your star rising and. Because now it started getting a little, you know how it is with promoters, it started getting a little awkward because I was literally performing at the same venues that I was doing with him, David Foster and Friends. Right. So it was just like, it started getting weird, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? And so it it just meant that it was just, I needed to graduate. Right. It was time to graduate. Yeah. And so we just, he, all love and he, you know, he and Kat are doing their Dave and Kat show. And um, but yes, I was just um, like, I saw the I saw the promo for that when I was in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, I I have to. I'm I'm now headlining my own show, so it, it's 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 just not uh, working, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in a negative way. No, no. It's just, that's how it goes. Just, that's how yeah. it's supposed to go. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Clark sisters. Yeah, Clark sisters. <clears throat> yeah, we gotta get. We gotta, <laughs> you gotta get there. Let's get into it. Come on. Yeah. How I want I want first phone call or. Or like, oh my God. Except like Clark sisters, give me the give me the Clark whole thing. Clark sisters, 
Well, first of all, I didn't see myself as an actress, you know, at all. So you hadn't done any acting before? No. Okay. No. I, I will say this. I was, I was, um, I had a small role in this actually very big movie. It was called All the Way. And um, it starred Anthony Mackey and he was, he was Martin Luther King and Lyndon B. Johnson was Brian Cranston. Mm -hmm. Actually, eight Emmy nominations and all that. But I just had like a little small role where I was like singing live. I was singing live though. Mm -hmm. okay. So I was singing. So I, I kind of looked back at that moment like that was kind of like foreshadowing, kind of preparing me for it. Cause like you know how it is, you absolutely know. I see you know how it is with all these different takes and stuff. You know, you know. So you know over and over all these different angles. So I was singing live, so I had to sing live every single time. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was cool. So that was like a a, I, a small little role, but again, I I didn't see myself as like, you know, being really part of an ensemble cast. And so Christine Swanson, who was the director, um she and I were working on a completely different project just musically. And I remember when she came and she told me, she's like, I just got signed on to direct um, the Clark Sisters, First Ladies of Gospel. And um, at that time, well, it was called You Brought the Sunshine. Then it wasn't, it was, that's what it was called. And she was like, you know, I can't make you any promises, but I think you should just put your name in the hat for it. Like, you know, try to, you know, put a self tape and, and submit it. So I was like, really? You think so? I feel like that's that's like a that's a big role. That's a you know, I don't know. You start thinking of all the other people that could play it instead yes. of you. Yes. <laughs> Who looked more like her, you know, right. just mm -hmm. all of that. And um she said, just just do it. Just do it. So I did it and they it wasn't a no, but it wasn't a yes either. You know. So I keep working, I keep working, I keep working, and I work with um Josie, Josie Harris. She's a great, great acting coach. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was actually on on tour with Dave Koz at the time. And by the on a side note, 27 shows in 30 days. Yeah. 27 shows. 27 shows, shows 30 in 30 days. days. That sounds like a cruise. Yeah. No, but not <laughs> but but not a cruise. <laughs> that sounds like a cruise. Yeah. yeah. It it was in, it was insane. And so I remember one of the days I was just so tired. We were on our way to San Antonio and that was going to be like our, one of the days off. And Christine is like, I think you should come to Detroit and just meet Karen, meet Kiera, you know, just fill it out, you know. And I was just like, damn, like, I'm so, I was just like, when you just have nothing, like Good. just, just fumes. So I make my little ticket, use my little miles, pay for my way to get there, get my little hotel, and I meet with them. I go to their church, I and I meet Kier, and we go to the piano, and I don't even know how anything literally came out. But we start, I start playing You Brought the Sunshine. No, 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 Miracle. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a miracle. Yeah. And we do this duet. And so Christine sends it to the producers, and they're like, that. That's her. That's Kier. That that's Karen and that's Dorinda. Wow. So that's what's it. So I tell people just on a side note, like, you want everybody to invest in you. You want people to take chances on you. You have to bet on yourself. Yeah. First. Yeah. Before anybody else. That's the will. best bet. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't have the role then. Right. At all. You know, it wasn't a no, but they weren't. I was. You know, I was really green. So that's when really the work began, and I worked my ass off, like. You know, working with Josie, you know, a couple times a week for months. And by the time they yelled action, it was, I was, was ready. more ready in that moment than I've ever been for anything in my life. Do you feel like the acting helped you as far as being a performer as well? Just I do. Your live performance I and do. just preparation? Because obviously acting is, is a whole nother level of study. It's a different muscle, but... Tank, I'm sure you can back me up on that. It comes from the same place because it's mm -hmm. just storytelling. And, and that's what you Josie gonna, you really gonna helped. You're going to keep tapping into his acting? I know. Are you gonna... <laughs> First of all, I'm on a TV one I'm, and BET's I'm, fine. I'm talking, okay. I'm talking here. I have, right? I'm not going to even look at this guy. Oh, let's, it, they, let's affirm our they, tank. They just call me. They just call me and give me roles. Shout out to BET, TV one. Okay. Uh, Lifetime. 
Hey. You, you know what I'm saying? I know. Uh, Tank, Tank does those movies that they give you the funny haircuts in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Damn. Wait a second. So she knew what? exactly oh, what I was talking about. So what? So what? <laughs> So what? It's still your lining be down here. Oh, way down there. <laughs> eyebrows just like God don't even make linings at the eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> I got some pushback cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, oh God! I enjoy craft. Aren't you having a good time here? <laughs> I already knew. I already knew what time it was with you guys. I mean, come uh, on. So so yeah. I mean, it, it literally is. She said, when you sing, she said. You tell a story. Yeah. And that's why it's like, for me, this is another little side note. Like, I don't want somebody to say, damn, girl, you 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 really can sing. I want them to say, I felt something. Yes. You made me sad. Mm -hmm. You made me hopeful. Yeah. Huge difference. You made huge difference. Huge difference. And there's, there's, a, there's a huge difference between being impressive and impactful. Yeah. A lot of people want to be impressive. You know, I can do this run. I can sing this note. I can do that. But it's not impactful. Not impactful. It, you, you're not tapped into the, into the story. There's no truth there. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing that I've always felt is what has made me different is that people will always feel and hear the truth yeah. in whatever genre I'm singing. And so once I was able to just tr transfer that to acting, it was like all you're doing is just telling the truth. Yeah. Whatever is truthful to you in that moment so she said, the first thing she said is, this story isn't about Dorinda. This is a story about Shalea. You know, you have to find, you have to find, you have to find you in Dorinda. Yeah. And so, you know, it was actually very easy to find myself because we have very similar life experiences, blended family, you know, being raised in the church, um, you know, just all of those dynamics. And so it was very easy for me to be truthful in that, in that moment. But I think, that, you know, the win was so many people that know her well they were like I literally felt like I was looking at Dorinda and I know her well and they're like but you literally became Dorinda yeah. you did amazing yeah. thank you, you. Amazing. thank you you did amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we got we, we celebrating that thank we're you. celebrating and then that. vocally that's a whole other thing it's like one thing to have her essence but then her voice is so specific like very specific yeah. she's she yeah. you know she there's clarity but then there's rasp mm-hmm Mm -hmm. You know, she almost sings like a horn player. And their style um, of run is... It's, it's jazzy, it's but then it's, unique. but it's, yeah, it's, it's, very it's very unique. It's very, very unique. unique. Her, her choices are, are very, very specific. And they're a monster. Yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> um, here on the R&B Money Podcast, uh -huh. we want to, we want to get into your R&B mind. Okay. All right. We want to ask you some R&B questions. Okay. All right. Um. Top five mm. R&B artists. Oh, I hate this. Male or female. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We need it. We need it. Don't be political, man. I know. That's a thing. Don't you, we know yeah. you know everybody. Don't you do it. We know they're all friends. Yeah. But I know. Some people just have a gift that strikes you different than yep. the That's others. true. Yep. That's all. And see, and I think that all the people that I really love, you wouldn't necessarily say are. Can you be more specific? I mean, I think R&B is vast. So I know, but like R&B &B now or like R&B &B, like in the... Forever. Forever. What connects with you? Like, is Stevie R&B? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Stevie like, R&B? Well, yeah. I'm just saying he's he's everything. The Godfather? Yeah. But you feel like... But it he, starts but, in R&B. It's, it's rooted in like R&B. You feel like friend. it starts? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. You feel Stevie. But you you feel country artists. You feel rock. You know. I, I mean, but but this is a different place. It is a different place. R and B is a different place. Do you do you feel like Stevie sings his gospel songs differently? Let me ask you this. This is a whole other question, really quick. Do you feel like you sing gospel songs differently than you sing R and B songs? Like, is there a, is there a conviction that you have when you sing gospel that you know? Yeah, well, I mean, every I think every song is different based on the message. Yeah. Right. So I think the texture, um, the texture and tone, it definitely has to match the moment. You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely not going to sing um, "When We" the same yeah. as I sing "Jesus Is the Answer." Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's there is a difference there in delivery. Right. And intent. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even where your mind is when you're right, right. When you're, when you're in that place. So yeah. Um, our, but then like Whitney, who she would she would put oh in like a in a dance in song. anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Put it would just anywhere. Be, yeah. So you and got that. And the fact that. that you just drop that off <laughs> on us like that. Yeah. It's very disrespectful. And very perfect. Rude. It's really perfect. Really perfect. Really perfect, really rude. But that's fine. Disrespectful with her vocal. She disrespectful. You ever been punched by a vocal? Was, only on the Under Money podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she punched me. It's like the face. It's like, just re- I, I just wanted to ex- just show the illustration. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I say Stop that to say because. Stop dancing around. I know. The question. Top five. R and B. You got to be Stevie. You know, obviously. Yeah. You have Stevie. It has to be Stevie. Okay. It, okay. And to me, it also has to be Aretha. Oof. Side Easy. note, side note, I'm gonna be making my Royal Albert debut in London um next month doing a tribute to Aretha Franklin with a full orchestra choir. That even better. I, See, this is this <laughs> and, and, and and we wanted you here because because this is this is you are necessary. Aww, right? Thank you, Tim. And 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 the young girls growing up. Mm. There has to be a bar. Hmm. There has to be a level. Right. Because what we grew up on, what we all grew up on, there were bars. Yeah. Yeah. And those bars were mainstream. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. And now those bars for us or for the coming up generation aren't so mainstream. They have to look. That's true. That's true. For those inspirations. Yeah. And so you are necessary because you're such a gift and such an inspiration that needs major platform display. Major. You des- you deserve it. Thank you. So that these young ladies coming up who want to be anything, hmm. I'm not even going to limit it to singing or writing, yeah, or yeah. who want to be anything can see that in you. Cause Thank you. You know, yeah, it's... the bar is high. All right, keep going. <laughs> Uh, Aretha Franklin. Aretha. Uh, uh, orchestra next month. Next month. Uh, it's been okay. sold out for months okay. now. Yeah, settle out. I already know. Yeah. Don't don't now don't play me on this and be like, okay, she she you like how you guys do the, the name drop. No, 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 no. Oh, with the with the promo. The name drop. <laughs> with the young bird promo. They told me to say everything, okay, no, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. They told me. Don't, don't even, don't even. They were like, we, we want to tell, tell them everything. We told you not to hold back. Yeah, yeah, Okay, okay I didn't even okay. told you so, everything. So, but. Stevie Wonder. <laughs> okay, Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder. Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin. Okay, this is R&B. R&B. Of all time. For you. For me. Mm-hmm. For me. I want to say Marvin Gaye because there's so much deep storytelling. Why, why, why wouldn't you? you I know. Okay. You okay. He got okay. his little Marvin Gaye beanie on today. Look, look at him. He, okay. he, he trying to get a, he trying to get a part. <laughs> I'm trying to get the part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could so see Marvin, that. Okay. Marvin. Um, Marvin. God, this is so hard. Because like all these names are like flashing before my eyes. You know, Anita Baker. I remember, the, I remember the first time I heard her record because I, growing up, I could only listen to gospel music. So I remember my, I was with my aunt in LA and this came on. I was like, what is this? Like, what is this? What is yes. this? Yes. How old were you at this point when the first time you heard like secular music in a sense? Well, the, what's yeah. crazy is I would, we would listen to Stevie though. It was almost like Stevie okay. and Whitney, like if they were on TV, uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can, like you can we, get would, that. we would watch that. Okay. But it just wasn't like, I don't remember you even know telling me songs no. That out. I didn't, I had to play catch up. Mm-hmm. I had to play catch up later on. Um, so you got four. You got four. Imagine four? they wouldn't even give Anita a deal. Imagine that. I know. Can you, keep going, keep going. People that can't sing. And then Whitney. Go ahead. Of course. Oh, there's Whitney. There's there's Whitney. There's there's yeah. There's that's wow, easy. that's a great. Wow, five. is that a good five? Oh my no, it's God. great five. Really? No, that's no, not just good. That's a great. I mean, because there's everyone <laughs> you know. In, just in my opinion, mm-hmm. they don't have any holes in their game. No weaknesses. Like right. everybody that you name, right, is legit. They right. can perform live. Yes, they have great songs. Yeah, like the artistry was amazing. Like that's yeah, special. Yeah, that's special. Okay. Yeah. There's real quick though, okay, because I want you to get your five first. Mm-hmm. I wanted to point out. Because you spoke about going over to London 
mm. selling out shows, you know, starting off with David Foster and then being able to do the same venues that he does. I want to point out that that is off pure gift and mm. hard work more so than any kind of backing or any kind of, I caught some random song that, you know, blew up on TikTok or Talk just caught a wave on a radio. Like, because the other thing that happens in our business is people think that there's only one way mm. to be successful or to have a career in music. Yeah. And you are the prime example that you can be very successful yeah. going the route that you want to go. Yes. And taking the steps that you needed to take for your career and how you wanted to see your career. Mm -hmm. Because on the flip side of that, there are artists who have had massive songs. Sure. One, two, maybe a couple, few records mm -hmm. that can't fill out a hundred seater. Right. Two hundred seaters. Right. They can't go to London. They're not going to be performing in these special places. And that just... There needs to be a light on that as well because mm -hmm. I think a lot of artists get discouraged yeah. Yeah. that if they don't have this type of record that takes them somewhere, they'll never have a career. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case at all. And you're, yeah. to me, you're a prime example of that because you're not yeah. chasing a record. Right, right. You're out here having a career. Right. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. It's very different and, and just... And it should be applauded. And it should, mm -hmm. and like Tank said, there needs to be platforms that shine the light on that. Yeah. Hopefully we're hopefully we're one of them. I think you, you are. Know? Hopefully we're you, one of them. Absolutely, not a think. You absolutely are. And you know, thank you for saying that because yeah, it's like the uh, the Frank Sinatra song just popped in my head. I did it my way, you know. And and I I tell people all the time like figure out what success looks like and feels more more importantly feels like to you yeah. because as you said we can look at a lot of people's careers that it looks right very successful yeah um and it might even be successful if you're looking at numbers right yeah right. um but but how does it feel you mm -hmm. know i i still feel like that 2 year old when i first you know <laughs> watching Mr. Rogers, I want to tell the age of myself, but watching Mr. Rogers, I'm thinking, who the fuck is playing the piano? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that is, is going crazy. Did <laughs> you know who it was? Mr. Rogers. What? Yes. Oh, I found that out. It was Mr. Did Rogers. He, did Somebody he talk about that, that in the movie? Huh? Because I haven't yeah. seen this movie, but it he might maybe talk about the movie. It was actually Rogers. Mr. Rogers, I heard. I, I, I fat, somebody fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Boy, that's the race. But I still that same kind of childlike love for just what I do. I still feel that way, and I'm grateful for that. That after all these years, yes, do I experience moments of frustration and disappointment? Of course, absolutely. You know, even if I wasn't doing music, we would, I would feel that at some point. Um, but I love what I do, and I've been able to find out what my why is. Mm -hmm. And it really is to touch people's hearts through music. And so when I get somebody DM me and say, you know, your song, You Are Enough, I, I listen to that every morning before I go to work. I play it for my kids. Some people have even said, I want it to end my life. But I had that on repeat. And literally, I decided not to. That's, what it is. that's the win. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's my Grammy. Win. That's, yeah. that's yeah. you know, th that's my awards. You know, do I want those things one day? Absolutely but that's not the core of my why. Yeah. And so I think for that reason, I've been able to stay true to what I do and and not be wavered by any trend because I I really love what I'm doing right now. I've been able to find like just the, the, the core of where that joy comes from. Yeah. And that's something that honestly, that that is the highest level of success to me. Um, is to be able to to do that and have you that. Articulate. You, better, <laughs> you better use your words. <laughs> I'm sick of you. <laughs> I'm sick of you. Okay. Prepare to be sick of me. Here we go. Um, okay. Top five R and B mm. songs or oh R and B albums. You can mix it. Okay. Off the top, I already know like. I want you. That album, Marvin Gaye. Oh, I want you. Like to me, there is literally God. 
no skips. It's it's such a beautiful body of work. Yes, um, in that same in that same vein, I would have to say Maxwell, the mm. first one. Urban Hang Suite. Urban Hang Suite. Mm. There to me, there's something Oof. so just Oof. connected about it. Mm -hmm. Um and then, of course, let's go back to Stevie. And I it's either between Talking Book. Let's see, there's okay, there's this one album right before Talking Book. It he wasn't, it was like you could you started hearing him really become Stevie. It wasn't that Motown sound. Mm -hmm. And it's an album called Where I'm Coming From. And that's to me when he really started like going so, deep yeah. and that's when talking book was right after that so yeah. i always feel like that was like the pre-talking book yeah um so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go out on a limb and put that one because i i feel like it was an important album for his development mm -hmm. so where i'm coming from okay i, I don't know if it's top i'm just trying to be yeah. exotic with You're my choices yeah, yeah, I love it. um okay let's get some girls in there let's see what's album that, that like no skips why this one just came to me Jill Scott like that first album oh, yeah, I mean, was wow. just like yeah. Yeah. yeah it was just it was so cohesive yeah. you know yeah yeah and I remember like where I was like I, I always like look at records like you know do you remember where you were like in during that time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I can see it I can so that I would say Jill which I'm sure these are like so not what people would expect me to choose um and then let's get some Q in there, but that was actually the jazz side. So no, it's okay. Let's see. I'm talking about like his earlier, earlier yeah. stuff, like quintessential, but that's jazz. Um, let's see. Juke, uh, juke joint. The juke joint, yeah, but I don't juke know joints. if I, if that's like my favorite. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I do love that record. Yeah. That has set timber on it. That's Moody's move for love. <laughs> Brian and um, yeah. God. <laughs> it, calls, it really creates anxiety. I don't want to like miss somebody. Okay, who are my top five? I said Whitney. You said Anita artists. Baker. Yeah, Anita, Whitney, Baker, Anita Baker. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. Stevie. Stevie and Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin. Okay, I'm not gonna. I, I'm just gonna say this one because I just feel like I should say it, and I do remember where I was. Carl Thomas. Wow. I love Carl Summer Thomas. Rain. Wow. I mean, that was Carl a very deep I wish. record. Wow. I wish all of those. I mean, let me lay your body. I mean, it's, I, I, I feel like that's a very. Shout out to Carl. Shout, shout out, out to out Carl Thomas. I wanted to do it for guy. that reason, too. Shout, shout out, out to Carl Thomas. You know what I mean? That is my guy. Yeah. That is my guy. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. feel like I should have. I feel like I wanted to, like, Shout that out. I, yeah, I love yeah. that. I love that. Okay, here we go. Not done. R&B Voltron. You're taking a vocal. Ooh. Um, how do we break it down, Jay? A vocal. A vocal. Performance. Performance. Uh, style. style. Yeah. If you're, if you're putting together the perfect R&B artist. Mm. Who do you take the vocal from? Who do you take the style from? Who do you take the performance from? And put it all together and make one. And a performance and dan dance moves can be different. Yeah, can be different. Yeah, right. Because Rick James, a great performer, but then Michael Jackson, dance different. You know what I mean? Like right. so, it's like that's a difference in performance right. too. Right. You know, or how Mary J. Blige, mm -hmm. how she get up there and she yeah. gonna you know? stiff leg. Yeah. 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 But they yeah. go man. Yeah. Go crazy. They go yeah. crazy. Cranky, go crazy. Cranky Beverly ain't doing no dance moves, but he she, performing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 yeah, I see what you. These are Let's so good. Let's start with the vocals. Let's start with the vocals. Start, start, start with the vocals. Start with the vocals. Okay. So the vocals I would take from, and this is all r and I'm just going to say Stevie because only, you guys are like, we don't need your explanations. <laughs> it's Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder. It's Stevie Wonder. Wonder. But I'm saying it's the impact because- when I would tour with him, I actually didn't mention this, but I toured with him for a couple years too. Mm. We did 
when he did the Songs in the Key of Life tour, he lost one of his uh, singers that had, you know, some health issues. So I stepped in and he was like, I know this is not what you do. I was actually working on an album. He was like, but can you just come with me? Just fit, help me finish this tour. And so just watching him every night, I mean, the show would start with like, Love's in Need. <laughs> and then he would literally do the whole album in track order, everything all the way to, wow. yeah, another star. So hearing that every night, all of the nuances vocally that he would have to do, Summer Soft, all of those key changes. And she's gone. You remember, it keeps going up and up. So I just feel like the vocal has to start there because it's, it's just so pure and it's so, you know, it's such a universal sound. I haven't heard anybody who really can replicate that. Nobody's out it's singing the, it's Stevie the, it's the, Wonder. It's the light. It's the, but it's not even. It's not because if you look, he doesn't really do a lot of runs all the time. Like he can. It's not, it, it's not the. He's run. done that more in later years. It's not but the run. No. It's, it's it's the technique. And how he attacks and how a he note. Attacks a note and how yeah. he skip a note like just real real quick. It's subtle. Everything is so real subtle. subtle, but it's still very difficult if you don't know placement and know how know where to put those yeah. little skips no, he's in a technician. Moments. Exactly. He's a technician. It's not easy what he but does. But he but he does it effortlessly. Effortlessly. It doesn't because it, he's not thinking. He's it's just his. he's just being. Stevie Wonder is a style. He's a yeah. style of vocal. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. It's his. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's absolutely. absolutely a style absolutely. of vocal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is where you get Stokely and where you get Yes. Then I come along and follow Stevie yes. and Stokely. Brian, and, uh, Brian and all them that, that have those that. those pieces. Yes. Yeah. 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 You don't have to explain Stevie. No. Stevie is we, we, we get God vocal. God I know. I don't have to explain, but I, I just I yeah. just wanted to, like, because to me, when you would look in that audience and you would literally see just the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, he's not, he doesn't belong to any race. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody feels like he's there. In a time where... Yes! Yeah. That's what's so, you, you that's what's so profound. You had to, yeah. Yes. Like yeah. him he, he kicking broke, down he those barriers. barriers. Yeah. That him early. putting a line, literally saying directly, like speaking directly to the issues at hand. I mean, I was at a show where he was like, yes, yes, all lives matter. Yes, but right now, black folks' lives are in danger. So that's why we have to say Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And all y'all in here are black. So it should matter to you. <laughs> and and yeah. nobody said nothing. Yeah. Because Stevie said it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, no, no, all y'all got a little black in you. So it should matter to you. Yeah. So that that's who he is. And that's, to me, his voice has attracted literally every person from every walk of life. So that's why I would start with the core voice being him. Vocal Stevie. Vocal Stevie. Uh, performance. Performance meaning like just how hard who, they go. Who, no, no. Whose performance no. would you captures? Would, yeah, would you take and put in in your R and B artist? Whether it be, it doesn't matter mm. whether they dance or don't dance. Doesn't matter. You, you you pick the performance style. Okay, this is gonna sound really weird, but there is something so magnetic and sensual and connected about Sade. Mm. The way that she There's no, yeah, yeah, articulates, yeah, yeah. or the way she performs. The way she just yeah. exists. The way yeah. she just exists. <laughs> <laughs> but when she performs, it's like, it's it's, like, it's something, it's just so. Mesmerizing. It's mesmerizing. Can you imagine like Stevie? <laughs> I know it's a weird combination. It's, that's what's going on. Stevie yeah. with like Sade moving or like. <laughs> but like, that's bomb. That's yeah. Like, <laughs> Kinda. Ooh. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. That Sade is is just with whose style? Whose style? Style. Like what they look like. Like their swag, yeah, just, like yeah, the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe I should have put And just even what they wear. Like just Yeah. The, mm -hmm. I would say Aaliyah. Only Great because style. it's complimentary to like the, the Sade it's thing. Very, you know what I mean? Yeah. Very complimentary. So yeah. Yeah. Great style. I mean, so many girls who followed that look and absolutely, yeah, wow. 
Wow. Yeah. That's a she's hot, right? Like that artist, that R and B artist has that the level of Stevie with like the sensuality and connectedness of Sade. Got the swag like Leah. I'd sign her. Huh? <laughs> I said I'd sign her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, definitely, I would definitely do that deal. For sure. <laughs> For sure. That's so that's so not probably what I would have thought going into it, but that's just what I felt right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 What I'm about I just want to know really quickly, no. I'm sure you guys have thought about it. Like, what would you do? I'm not we're not doing this. You're not no, doing not, that. I'm just doing curious. No. When we come on your podcast. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. You gotta so, you gotta give us the thing. <laughs> we have a part of the show mm -hmm. that is we consider it to be a pretty important part of the show. Yeah. Um, it's called I Ain't Saying No Names. Okay. Where you give us a story, uh -huh. funny or fucked up, <laughs> or both, and the only rule is you can't say the names of the people that are in the story. Now, you can give hints of who they may be. I mean, because you know, you know everyone. Um, <laughs> this is social media. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh -huh. and it's, like I said, it's either funny or fucked up or both, and the only rule is you can't say their names. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're a musician. It could start I off could, this one time at band camp. It. This, one yeah, time band camp. this one time, this one. It's been a few band camps. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's cracking at band camp. I don't know if it's a story. Like, it's not like a long, drawn-out, big story. But I was at um, a particular studio. And uh, this particular, another artist walked in. I'm there. I'm just chilling. And and so this artist walks in and like the whole like energy like shifts, right? So I just immediately like walk out. It's clear that, you know, my presence is offending them. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it was told to me later on that they were like, um, no, who's that? <laughs> I had like a high bun. Who's the girl with the bun in her head? <laughs> They're like, oh no, she's, she's like, she's an artist. She's not like just some studio rat just chilling around like, bitch will sing. And so they heard, so I was actually walking in right as that conversation was being had. And, um, so they tried to kind of play it off. It's just like, oh, I, I heard you're a great singer. I heard you could, <laughs> heard you could sing, you know? Yeah. I could, you know. So, you know, s sing something for me. Like, expecting me to be like, probably like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> 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 I've, heard, I've heard that vocal before. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, shit. So, oh um, so no, so I Did the got to it. I gave that bitch everything. I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the whole it it, it just it just changed. It, it was, changed. It, it changed. It was like, yeah. Oh, and then it was like. It's love. It was love. It was yeah. love. Respect. You know, and, and listen, I, I get it. You it's know, competitive. It's competitive. And and energy is energy. If you don't know me and you like your space a certain way, you mm -hmm. just like, who is, who who is, is this? this? Who is this? Who's my space? You know, who's the girl with what the bun qualifies in yeah. the bun girl? The bun girl. To be, to be, like, to, to be here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I need to know. <laughs> I'll let you know. We ain't saying no names. We are not saying no names. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank will give others an opportunity to be in that same awe oh, wow. of you. Thank you. That is the goal. Yeah. So um, we give you nothing but flowers. Mm. Um, <laughs> we thank you for 
um, you 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 had you had a beverage. You I, didn't I drink had it. some. No, I did. Fine. Look, you, you sipped it. I um, sipped uh, um, dos artes. Dos artes. Thank dos you artes. for having a beverage with us. <laughs> um, and thank I you. I actually just, really like it too. Very good. Very thank good. you for just giving us yeah. a moment um, of your time, telling us your yeah. story, yeah. Um, and sharing yourself with the world. You're awesome. Thank awesome. you. And I just have to say, just for what you guys are doing, just for the culture, just for just the integrity of music, specifically R&B music, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing and for mm -hmm. just being such a light in my life. You know, you guys don't realize just how nurturing you were to me in those years, you know, those earlier years. And and even now, just, just your words of encouragement mean something so so deep to me so thank you for just being who you guys are and i i want to see this go just as high as it can go because you guys got something really special and i love your chemistry you know i love being here thank and you. i saw it when i was just looking at clips just so i was like let me what am i getting myself into <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, this is gonna be a good time. Yeah. But I, I, I already loved you guys individually, yeah. but together you guys have something really special. And so, <laughs> you are, you are, you are. So thank you for Absolutely. just giving me this moment just to just, just share space with you. To shine. So thank you. To shine. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, yeah. Yeah. I am yeah. Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. <laughs> this is Shalea. Yeah. And this has been the <laughs> Money Podcast. <laughs>